I don't know how to introduce this. I did it! I had a baby! He's here. He's healthy. He's happy. He's perfect in every way. He's such a good baby. He's just so easy and we have been adjusting pretty well. The kids love him. He loves his brothers and sisters. It's just, I don't know, I love having new babies. I just, I love it so much. I want you to meet my baby, Hudson. So he is nearly five weeks old now, so he's, I mean, he's getting big. I feel like that the newborn stage just flies, flies. After the second week, they're no longer newborn anymore. Now they're just an infant. It's bittersweet. <laughs> and I, I don't know, I just, I love the newborn stage. Have we been the whole time? <laughs> Get all that. I bet that makes you feel better. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay. Mm. I know I waited a long time to introduce my baby and to tell his birth story, but like I said, because the newborn time goes by, it just flies by so fast. And in the meantime, I mean, he's my sixth baby, so I have five other kids that I'm still taking care of and being a mom for, like life didn't stop for us, you know? When you have your first baby and even sometimes sometimes your second baby, then life can just kind of stop for a minute and you can just like do nothing for days, right? But when you have so many kids, school is still a thing. I mean, we had two birthdays in the time from since he's been born until now. So yeah, life has been pretty busy. It's been moving really, really fast, but I love it. Wouldn't have it any other way. But now I finally have the chance to sit down and tell his birth story and how everything happened. If you didn't watch my birth vlog, then go check it out. I'll link it in the description box. Um, but it was, it was a really, really good birthing experience. I loved it. And honestly, this is the first time that I've ever recorded it, like recorded any of the laboring, recorded the actual birth. This is the first time that I've ever done that and it was the best thing ever because I love birth, I love labor, I love it all. It's hard, obviously, but I love it. It's such a wonderful experience. I, I can't even describe, I can't even put into words how much I love labor and birth. So to be able to go back and watch it because after so much time goes by after having a baby, you kind of forget a lot of the things that happen and you know, our memory isn't as sharp. So having it recorded is honestly one of the best things that I've ever done. So even if you don't plan on ever releasing footage, record your labor and delivery. It is seriously one of the best things I've ever done. I'm just gonna jump right in. The way that this birth happened, I was actually scheduled for an induction on March 22nd. But when I went into my appointment on March 17th, then my baby didn't do very well on the non-stress tests. Like he didn't pass his non-stress test. Also, when I went to my prenatal, like after I was, after I saw the non-stress test, I went to a prenatal and my doctor measured me and she was like, whoa, okay, you're still at 35 weeks. So those two things together, she just decided, you know what, let's see if we can bump up your induction date. And she happened to be the on-call doctor the following day, which was um, Thursday. March 18th. <laughs> so she was on call that day. So she was like, hey, let's just get you scheduled for an induction tomorrow. Like in the back of my mind, I kind of knew that that was going to happen. Not for any other reason than just, you know how you could just kind of have a feeling. You just kind of know something's going to happen. So when I walked into the appointment on March 17th, I kind of just knew. I just knew that that was going to happen. So it didn't shock me. But then at the same time to, to know that it really did happen, it also shocked me, <laughs> if that makes sense. So after that appointment, then they sent me down to labor and delivery where I took my COVID test. So after that appointment, I went home and I kind of just soaked up the news because like, like I said, I knew it was coming, but at the same time, like it was time and it, there's, 
this anxiousness that you feel, nervousness, but so much excitement. I was just so excited. So I went home and I took a nap and I just kind of relaxed because this was it like it was it was finally time and I was so happy I was so excited that night then I got a babysitter so that Wade and I could go to dinner for the last time before we have before we had the new baby that was really really fun it was kind of a bummer because I didn't pick where I wanted to go to eat beforehand so we spent like 30 minutes trying to figure out where to eat <laughs> And then settled on a like subpar restaurant, you know, so it was a little bit disappointing. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> As the last meal before having a baby, it was a little disappointing. But then we went home. Usually, like, I'll try to go walking or something before labor, just like I said, so that the baby's in a really good position and everything can go smoothly for labor. But I just wasn't feeling it that night. Like, I just didn't want to at all. So I got home and I just kind of relaxed and I kind of wrapped my brain around everything. And then I just made sure my hospital bag was packed, everything was packed, and I was like ready to go. And then I went to sleep and all night long, like, I just, I could not sleep. And I knew I wouldn't be able to because I was super excited, but I, also, weirdly enough, and I've never had this happen to me yet, <laughs> but I was really, really nervous for labor. Like, I was just really, really nervous. I wasn't in the mood to go through all the pain. So, all night long, I just dreamt about the epidural. I dreamt in some dreams that I did it without the epidural, and it was amazing. It was so fun, and I was like, I got this. I can do this. And then I had other dreams where I did it with the epidural, and that was so fun, and it was so fun to talk to everybody and enjoy the situation and everything. So both scenarios were so much fun, but there was also just this anxiousness and nervousness for labor that I just wasn't expecting. Cause like I said, that's never happened to me before. That night went okay. And then first thing in the morning, like 6.15 in the morning, then I get the call from the hospital saying, okay, we want you to come in about 7.30. Um, I honestly wasn't expecting them to call me until around 9 o'clock. So when I got the call at 6.15, then nerves just kicked in high gear. <laughs> so I got up and I started to get myself ready, got my kids ready because they were going to school. And I sent my kids, all of them, with my mom. And she met up with uh, my sister-in-law who took my babies for me. And then my mom dropped my kids off at school. So I was really, really thankful that I had so much help um, last minute. I am so appreciative for it. But anyway, so they were able to take care of my kids for me. And then as soon as my mom left with my kids, we left just a few minutes after that to head up to the hospital. And we got, you know, we got checked in, everything. And it seemed like a really quick process this time. It seems like other times then it took us a little bit of time just to get checked in and everything. But it seems like it was just like all the way through. We just got checked in really quick. They got me set up on the monitors. They put the um, IV in. And again, she blew one of my veins on this side. So I had like a really, really big bruise. So, but I was glad that it didn't work on this part because I've had an IV here before. And when it's right on the bone, it just hurts the whole time during labor. And like, I don't need to focus on that pain when I'm trying to focus on the pain that's happening to me right now. Right? So I was glad it didn't work there and they had to replace it here. So that all worked out great. But as soon as they got the IV placed, then they just started the pit. They just put it in there. So what happens like with Pitocin, they don't just start you full on because you know, it's gonna freak out your body and you might have a bad reaction. It's just not safe. So they go like, it's just a slow process. So they put it in and on the lowest dosage and then 15 minutes later they came in and they upped it. And then it had been 30 minutes since they had started the pit. And so they were like, okay, now it's time to break the water. So my doctor came down and she checked. So when I first walked in, I was at like a three, I think. And then like only 40% efface. But then 30 minutes later, when they did check again to break the water, then I was already at a five and 80% effaced. So they broke the water. And when I first walked in, I wasn't sure if I was gonna get the epidural or not epidural or not. I was really nervous about it. So I just was gonna kind of fill it out and see how I felt. As soon as they checked and broke my water, like I up until that point, I didn't even feel the contraction. So I don't know how I got from a three to a five. Like I didn't feel anything. Nothing was happening. So I thought. So when they checked and I was already at a five and they broke my water, 
I knew it would be a fast process from there, or at least I thought it would be because that's how it had been with my other labors. So I kind of panicked at that point. <laughs> like I was like, okay, wait, I don't think I'm ready for this. Like even though I hadn't felt any pain, I just was like, I don't, I don't think that I'm ready to handle this. I just don't think that I can do it. Anyway, so I was sitting there kind of just thinking about everything and I didn't want to cave, cave and it's not like I was caving or anything, but I just, I didn't want to go for the epidural until I was sure that that's what I wanted to do. So I just kind of sat and thought about it, but then at the same time I felt like I was on a time crunch because with Roman's birth, then I did the same thing. Like I wasn't sure if I was going to get the epidural or not. And then at the point that I was like, okay, I want the epidural, it was too late. I couldn't get it anymore. Like it had progressed that fast and then it was over and I couldn't get the epidural anymore. And I was so terrified that that was going to happen with this baby. So I like sat there and I was like, okay, I need to really make sure that this is what I want to do, but then I need to make my decision fast because if I wait too long, then I'm not even going to get the option to get the epidural. So <laughs> like I, everything was just going through my mind and I was trying to decide, you know, epidural and not epidural. Um, and I think I waited an hour after that. So by this point it was, so when they broke my water, it was about 9.30 in the morning. And then an hour later, about 10.30, then they came in and I was like, okay, will you check me to see how far I've dilated just so that I know. And cause the pains kind of started to pick up a little bit more. So then she checked and I was like 85% effaced, but at a six. So then for me, like in my mind, I was thinking, okay, if I'm at a seven or any further, then it's basically too late or it's, it's not too late, but I know my body's going to go fast enough anyways that I'll be fine. Like I'll just have the baby and it's going to be fine. But if I was before a seven, then I should probably get the epidural right then. <laughs> so then, um, as soon as they were like, okay, you're at a six, then I was like, okay, just go, just call for the epidural, like just go. So then as soon as they called for the epidural, then the guy that they called for to, to give me the epidural, then he was in somebody else's room giving them an epidural. And I was like, oh crap. And so I started getting really, really nervous because I thought, because I thought that he wasn't going to make it in time to give me the epidural, you know? So I started like panicking. And in that time, the contractions really, really started to pick up. I could start to feel them when I was at a six. Like I started to be like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely feeling them. Um, but then after I was like, okay, get me the epidural. They just picked up an intensity or something. I think they also turned up the pit during that time. Anyway, this was like at 1030 and the, the contractions, they just started to pick up an in intensity. So then I started to panic a little bit. So I was breathing through the contractions, just like really loosening up everything. They were hard, but they weren't lasting a long time like they normally do. So I was like, it's, I don't know, I probably have time. I was hoping. <laughs> anyway, so then I went through a couple of those contractions and then he got in there. By the time that he got in there, it was about 11 o'clock and then he had me turn on my side and the contractions just picked up. They just were really, really painful and really close together. So as he's giving me the epidural, you have to hold really, really still, first of all, for the epidural. Second of all, because I was in so much pain, then I was like, okay. So I really, really had to get into my zone and just breathe. Breathe through the contractions and hold as still as possible. Every time that I would feel the pop and the clicks and the, the pokes and, and everything, you just have to hold still. So mind over matter, right? <laughs> so I just, in my mind, it was just like, okay, just hold still, just breathe, going through the contractions and just thinking in my mind, it's going to be over soon. The epidural is going to kick in. It, like it's, it's, it's almost there. It takes like 30 minutes. It feels like <laughs> for the epidural to get placed. So uh, then it was like 1130 and I start to feel like they had me on my side, on my left side, because let's see, no, my right side, maybe it was my right side. I think it was my right side. It was, okay. So they had me laying on my right side because sometimes, oh, okay, I get it now. Because I was laying on my left side when they placed the epidural, then 
it like all of the epidural will just go to the left side so they had me flip over onto my right side so that part of the epidural would go to my right leg and with this epidural it was really cool because I could still feel like I felt like I could still feel everything without feeling everything and so that was like I loved that experience some epidurals that I've gotten or both of the other epidurals that I've gotten I felt nothing, like absolutely nothing. So it was really hard to tell what was happening. So with this epidural, I loved the experience because I could still move my legs. I could still feel everything it felt like, but I couldn't feel everything. I was laying on my right side and I felt like every time that I would have a contraction, I would just feel a really, really ache or a throbbing in my pelvic, pelvic bone on the right side. And in my mind, I'm thinking it feels like his head is being pushed down onto my pelvis like this th there's a lot of pressure you know so i'm going like 15 20 minutes feeling this pressure and so finally at like 11 55 or something then the doctor comes in and she's like how are you doing and i'm like there's a lot of pressure so at that point i asked her if she could check me because honestly i was terrified that the same thing was going to happen to me that happened with atticus and that he just came out all by himself <laughs> so i was like will you check and make sure like just see where i'm at at this point and so she checks and she's like okay yep you're at a 10 and the baby's like really low down there so yep we're ready to push so they put me on my back and I, like I said, I could still feel part of it. So I felt a lot of pressure. Like I knew it was time. And so um, at like noon, and here's the thing. When we walked in there, I was like, oh yeah, the baby's going to be, be born before noon. Like I just know, I know he's going to be born before noon. And then it was noon and they were like, okay, let's push. And I was like, oh my heck, he did that on purpose. Like I was so close <laughs> to being, to having him here before noon, but you know, didn't quite make it. <laughs> but then um, at noon, they called the doctor down and started getting ready to push. And so when we first started the process, then, like I said, because I could still feel things, when you, ha when you get to this point in labor, you can actually do something with the pressure and the pain that you're feeling. Like up until this point, you just kind of have to breathe through it and just kind of let it happen. But at this point, you can do something with it. So you can push, you can, you know, do something with all the pain and the pressure that you're feeling. And so it felt, it felt like relief, I guess, to be able to start pushing. And so during that whole, during the first contraction, then I just pushed like two times just really really strong pushes and I could it like it felt it felt better I felt relief when I was pushing so that that was awesome and then they were like okay yeah the baby's really like he was right there after that first contraction and so then she was like okay the next contraction if you push the same way then he's gonna be born so I was like okay yeah I'm ready and so then I started to feel the contraction, but because I couldn't feel everything all the way, then I didn't feel the same urgency to just push. Like my body just, it didn't try to just push, right? So then um, it was really, really cool. But when the contraction hit, what happened was my uterus just started pushing the baby and he just started coming out all by himself. Like I didn't push at all. And honestly, I just sat there and just breathed through it and I could still feel, but I didn't feel the same pain so I just sat there and just breathed literally just like and my baby just started coming out and everyone was like oh my word she's not even pushing like watching and then they would look at me and they'd be like she's not even pushing how is this even happening the baby is just coming out anyway so then he just came out really really smooth it was so so smooth it just was it was incredible to be honest and like I said because I had captured it or uh, like videoed it it was the coolest thing to be able to go back and watch and be like wow you know this is amazing birth is amazing anyway but then he was born at 12 11 p.m so 11 minutes after they after i had bet that he would be here <laughs> then he got here so 12 11 p.m then Hudson was born and when he came out then the first thing that everyone was saying was whoa he's big like he's a big baby the reason that I was being induced was because he was measuring small and because he was in distress right all these things but he comes out and he's a big baby so they put him on me they're like where was he hiding like how how is he this big 
And when they took him over to weigh him, he weighed seven pounds and four ounces, which is my second biggest baby. So I was like, <gasps> big baby, wahoo. And to have his placenta, because the placenta was um, measuring small, it wasn't quite doing its job, which is why his non-stress test didn't work out well. But with his small placenta and with the single umbilical or artery or the two vessel cord, one of my biggest babies, like, it was awesome. It was incredible. And he, he is just so perfect. The whole experience was just amazing. And like I said, having it captured on camera and being able to go back and watch it is one of the best things ever. So even if you don't ever plan on releasing the footage for your own births or your own labors, record them so that you yourself can go back and watch them. It is the best thing ever, best experience ever. But yeah, awesome labor and delivery, and it was great. I didn't regret getting the epidural. <laughs> I know that up to, like, it's, it's so funny to go back and watch some of my other things that I, some of my other videos that I recorded while I was still pregnant, um, even my podcast interviews, which, by the way, if you haven't checked them out, then go check them out some amazing moms. Um, but during some of those interviews, then I was telling them, like, oh, yeah, like, oh, sorry, did they wake you up? <laughs> but I was telling them, like, oh, birth without an epidural is so amazing. That's what I'm going to do. And I, like, really talked myself up. But then when it came down to it, I totally got the epidural. <laughs> so it's so funny to go back and watch those other videos and be like, how embarrassing. <laughs> I gave myself way too much <laughs> pressure to, to birth without an epidural. So that was fun. That was exciting. We're so happy to have him here with us. He's such a good baby. He's so perfect and so precious. And I love him. <laughs>